Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I should say good morning to those of you who may be joining us from the central time zones, the mountain time zones, or the Pacific time zones. Of course, we also want to say good evening for any of those of you who are joining us from across the pond and maybe parts of uh, UK or Europe, and of course, a good early morning to any of you who might be joining us from parts of Australia or parts of Asia. Well, welcome to today's presentation. Hey, hey. Hey, Kurt, how's it going? <laughs> I'm doing well. Don't let me interrupt you. I just want to let you know I'm on. Oh, very well. No, I was just going to say that uh, based on the uh, promotional email that everyone received this morning to join us, we're going to be talking today about uh, one of the 10 different income methods that we use in the radioactive trading techniques to uh, uh -huh. lower our risk and potentially uh, more bulletproof, I should say, bulletproof, and then greatly increase the bulletproof status of a position, the ATM, not the ATM, the ATM machine, I was about to say the ATM bell curve there, but the ATM machine is one of the methods we're going to look at today, as well as, of course, the general setup of the radioactive profit machine, uh, and maybe some other techniques also. Very good. Yeah, well, I'm excited. Um, uh, let's see, shall I take the... Uh, take the um Go ahead, presentation Kurt. from you there? Go ahead. Okay. Groovy, cool. And have you run any polls? Or I have not. I just got us started. I have yet to run a poll or really introduce uh, yourself or myself. Okay. Very good. Well, let's uh, let's do that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try and show my screen. And presto, change -o. Do we have it up there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Shall we play a game? Yeah? Okay. Sure. <laughs> All right. That's actually part of a different presentation, but I might show that a uh, uh, few, few uh, words from that anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. I'd like to, uh, uh, yeah, you know what, let's do that. Let's, let's go ahead and, and show this uh, uh, quick, um, quick idea, and then, uh, and then we'll just jump into our presentation. Now, uh, here's a true story. Uh, a legendary uh, trading coach named Ralph Vince did an experiment in which he he uh, chose 40 PhDs, mm -hmm. 40 PhDs. And uh, if you're a tra uh, from outside the United States, PhD means a doctor of philosophy or a person that has uh, gone very very high in their chosen field, the doctorate degree. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and. Um, uh, you know, one of my friends that's a PhD calls it piled higher and deeper, <laughs> knowing more and more about less and less. But uh, anyway, very bright individuals. Anyway, he gave them a thousand dollars virtually and a, a computer game in which they had a hundred trials. Okay, a hundred tries where they could uh, uh, bet this virtual thousand dollars, you know, or any portion thereof. They could bet a mm dollar. -hmm. They could bet. Fifty dollars, he could bet a thousand dollars, or uh, or whatever their pot, you know, had grown to. They could bet that. They were guaranteed sixty wins, but it would happen randomly. Okay, so six. Uh, it's basically a six in ten chance of winning each time that they would play. Okay. Even money return. All right. So you bet it. Bet a dollar, you lose a dollar. Okay, or you bet a dollar and you win a dollar. And they were given free reign as to how much to bet, and that was the killer. Mm -hmm. Would you believe that 40 out of these, uh, I'm sorry, out of 40 of uh, these very bright people, individuals, 38 of them lost money? 38. Mm. That's 95 percent of some folks that, uh, well, you know, I don't have a doctorate. Uh, I've, I've lectured at, at uh, MIT, and, and there's PhDs in the audience. I felt a little... Uh, a little intimidated, okay, but uh, but these are some very very bright individuals, and guess what? Uh, Ninety-five percent of them lost money. How about that? And guaranteed to win sixty percent of the time. Yeah, they were given a winning game. So you know how did this happen? Well, um, by the way, none of these PhDs had a background in probability or statistics, okay, and that's probably uh, why because they would have realized that in a uh, hundred tries and 60% of which they're guaranteed to win, all they might have done is bet $100 a play. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's unlikely that the first 10 plays would end up being losers. <laughs> Very unlikely. Okay, so all they really had to do is bet $100 each time, and uh, 60 wins times $100 is $6,000 in earnings. 
but of mm. course they would have had 40 losses, all right, uh, times their $100, and that would have been $4,000 in losses. But uh, uh, at any rate, uh, no matter what the order would have been, unless of course there was 10 consecutive losses at the very beginning. Right out of the gate, yeah. Yeah, which is, you know, uh, highly unlikely. Uh, but uh, but unless they had that, their total earnings would be about two thousand dollars on a thousand dollar stake. Okay, so uh, a two hundred percent return. Um, but uh, they they didn't do this. Why do you figure that happened, Mike? Why do you figure they were not able to do well, even though the odds were in their favor? Well, they either probably bet too much mm -hmm. out of the gate, or they might have even bet too little. At certain times when right. they won, and then over bet, and they ended up losing on the forty percent. Right. Yeah. Uh, what What happens is a lot of times we we think that okay, you know, I had two losses in a row, I'm due for a win. Mm. <laughs> but that's not true. You know, I mean, uh, if if you've got a sixty percent chance of winning. It's a 60% chance of winning on the third try, on the fourth try, on the 99th try. Mm -hmm. It's 60% chance of winning. All right. And uh, uh, fact is um, that uh, if you bet too little, you're doing yourself a disservice. If you bet only $1 and win twice in a row, out of $1,000, $1, now you've got $1,002. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that's not good. But then you might get overconfident and say, "Wow, I'm I'm, I'm winning. I'm doing well," and then bet uh, you know 500, and then pow, you know half of your investment's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a 10% loss, Mike, uh, would it take a 10% gain to get back to where we started? No. Let's take that same example with our thousand dollars, Kurt. If uh, I bet a thousand dollars on a position and I lose 10%, well, my account's going to be down to nine hundred dollars or my right. capital, I should say, it's going to be down to $900. Well, if I make the next play and I get a 10% gain, well, I'm going to make 10% of what I invested, so I'm going to make another $90 or so, 10% off the $900, $90, and now I'm left with $990, but I'm not back to 1000 am I? Right. You're, you're behind the curve. Mm -hmm. And that, this is a, a mathematical phenomenon uh, that's called the Martingale uh, Principle or... Uh, Gambler's ruin. <laughs> a twenty per, it gets worse and worse. A twenty percent mm. loss, you would need a twenty five percent gain to get where you started. A twenty five percent loss, you'd need a thirty three percent gain to get to where you started. Thirty three percent loss, you'd need a fifty percent gain. And think about it: if you lost half your money, that'd be a fifty percent loss, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to double your money, which is a uh, hundred percent gain. You got to double your money on the next play or string of plays to get back. To where you started, you don't even have bragging rights, okay? And uh, so that's that's the idea. Just to get back to square one, um, this uh, martingale or, or gambler's ruin is a logarithmic uh, graph, and and what happens is uh, the the red represents your loss, and the blue represents the gain that you'll have to make to get back to where you started. Mm -hmm. So. You know, it, it's not something that you can get away from, all right? Down and to the left, it's not such a slippery slope. But to the right, well, the more we try to use leverage, all right, and the more that we try to uh, use a little to get a lot, the more often we're going to get hung up on this right side of the graph and the more often we're going to get hurt, okay? It's just a mathematical fact. Now, Knowing that that's a mathematical fact, okay, let's let's uh, turn that around and say, well, <laughs> if a 50% loss means that I need a 100% gain to get back to full strength, what does a 5% loss mean? Well, if we just divide it by 10, we would think, oh, well, we're going to need a 10% gain to get back to break even, but that's not how the curve works. If we suffer a 5% loss on a position, we only need about a 5.26 gain or 5.3% gain to get back to break even. That's right. need a 5.26% gain just to get back to where you start. Now, Mike, can you wrap your head around that? I mean, can, could you see yourself making 5.26% in a position? Yeah, sure. I mean, we see stocks move up that much in a day. You know, sometimes they pop up in the morning. And uh, I know the last few days we haven't seen that in a lot of stocks. But, uh, you know, you'll see that in a few-hour period. You might see a stock gain 4 or 5, uh, maybe even 6% or so. Right, and if and if you're bearish, you know you do a bearish play uh, days like today or uh, you, you yesterday. Might, uh, yeah, yesterday especially, <laughs> you might be able to see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the point is, 
All right. A, uh, the smaller you keep your losses, the better. Okay. The problem with trading is that we just don't know what's going to happen next, and for that reason, we will have losses. All right. And strings of losses and strings of wins are inevitable. But for this reason, if we can just keep our losses manageable and let our winners run, we're going to mm -hmm. do well. Okay. All right, Mike. Uh, I'm going to check out of this uh, this particular uh, presentation and jump into the one that uh, it's entitled Mike today. All Mike right. today, <laughs> because we're doing it with you, Mike. Uh, we're going to actually um, be uh, introducing you. Okay. I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Kurt Frankenberg. I wrote a book uh, uh, almost 10 years ago now called The Blueprint. And the, the principles in it are timeless, uh, but we're constantly improving it by, by uh, refining uh, some of the add-ons, some of the what I call the income methods. The original principle is all about keeping your losses down into that single digit percent that we we're just talking about. Mm -hmm. but, but then we also have uh, the opportunity to make adjustments. And this is something that very few uh, trading programs participate in very few. We'll talk to you about how to adjust on the fly. Okay. Now, uh, I'd like to introduce you, Mike. Mike, you have been working at Power Options for nine years now. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, Kurt. Yes, sorry, nine years. I've been working with Ernie for nine years now. Okay. And uh, during that time, uh, you have grown into the position now that you are the uh, director of options education. Mm-hmm. You're familiar with all 23 strategies that Power Options supports. You Absolutely. Cover calls, double diagonals, uh, condors, iron butterflies, you know, everything. Uh, you've, you've got a background in You know how to trade it. Right. Well, theoretically, I mean, this, there are certain positions, I'll be up front, that I've never traded before <laughs> in my account, and those would be naked calls, short straddles, short strangles, and iron butterflies, or the all-call or all-put butterflies. I just don't like that risk-reward tolerance or the fact that on the butterflies, I'm really trying to pinpoint a strike price at a given time. Hey, if I, I always tell my customers, if they're trading iron butterflies, if they're uh, consistently profitable, where they're able to pinpoint a strike price where the stock's going to be trading the next 20 or 30 days, they don't need to be calling me for help. They're going to be doing just fine. <laughs> That's right. If they're that good, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. But, uh, Mike, I just wanted to build you up a little bit and introduce you because you are going to be showing uh, what you've done with the radioactive trading uh, methods. And uh, I'm going to show the principle. Actually, I'm going to show two principles. Okay, I'm going to show the principle, but then you're going to show an actual trade. Yes. And uh, uh, so uh, I'm going to ask folks, hey, listen, we do want you to participate. We want you to ask questions. But please hold your questions to the end because Mike is going to be really engaged here um, talking with me and then also presenting on his own. Uh, so we're going to ask you to hold questions until we ask for them, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and we will answer questions. If you've been to the last three webinars, you know that we're very responsive. And I'm going to also ask you to participate in the polls and the prompts. Okay, so now let's let you guys introduce yourselves. I'd like to know uh, what kind of option plays you're doing right now and, and how you came to be with us today. So uh, let's uh, do that real quick. Like We'll make this really short. Okay, um, I've got five different alternatives here. What kind of options plays you, uh, are you doing? And you can choose more than one. All right, so if you happen to be doing spread trades and long calls or long puts, uh, let us know. Maybe you're doing spread trades and combinations, but you also don't like options uh, during the last uh, few <laughs> weeks, for example. That's a possibility as well. Yeah, I, uh, we had uh, some folks uh, put uh, covered calls and also options me no likey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but uh, uh, that, that uh, response is actually intended to be, uh, hey, I'm not familiar with options yet or I'm just getting started. That's what that, that particular answer is intended to be. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave that up for just a few more seconds. And Mike, we've got a very responsive audience. Thanks a lot there, gang. More than half have already voted. And mm -hmm. I know that some of you are, are just tuning in by way of uh, telephone, so you can't respond. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, we've got uh, quite a bit more than half. Very good. Okay. All right. Let me close the poll and share the results. There we go. Mike, we've got 4% saying options mean no likey. To those guys, I'm going to say probably there's only two reasons why you wouldn't like options. One is that you're so new that you're not familiar with uh, all the terms and so forth. Um, and and that I'll just remind you that there was a time when you didn't know what a stock was either. You know, mm -hmm. So, so uh, you know, hang, hang in there. And then uh, the second reason is that maybe you learned just enough 
to get yourself into trouble. And that is what uh, my mission is all about, Mike. My mission is to help folks to not get into trouble anymore. Education and uh, seeing the proper path. That's right. So we've got 60%, 61% doing cover calls and naked puts, 57 long calls and puts, 75%, a whole lot of folks doing spread trades and combinations, and a few intrepid solely naked calls. Mm -hmm. All right. Mike, uh, uh, another real quick poll, and, and uh, we're going to get on with it. I'm going to tell folks what to expect, and, and, uh, and uh, we'll get into some real meat and potatoes here. The last three webinars, what we did was a hundred percent content. Today we're gonna we're gonna make an offer, but we're gonna make that offer toward the end or at the end. Uh -huh. um, wow, uh, we got a lot of folks here from Power Options. We do have folks that are here because a friend invited them. Good, that's kind of cool. Yeah. All right, let me leave this up for another, oh, three or four minutes. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to leave this up for another five seconds. So if you haven't uh, gotten your vote in, please do. Three, two, one, and blast off. Oof. All right. We've got about a 28% here. 80% are uh, already customers of yours, Mike, uh, uh, or your company, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, customers of Bernie's, um, already on the Power Options mailing list. And then... The rest uh, either were searching for alternatives to cover calls or spread trades, and um, and some folks uh, came because a friend told them about. It. So that's that's awesome. Okay, Mike, uh, is my screen showing? Uh, this? Yes. In this webinar, we will make a I will make a bold promise. <laughs> Three bold promises. Okay. Excuse me. Three bold promises. Okay. First, I'm going to show you the solution to the biggest problem that's facing traders today, and that's a tall order. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm willing to bet that you're going to take a look backwards in time and wish that you had done uh, what I'm going to share with you sooner. Second, I'm going to show you a riskless spread trade, one that takes all risk out of a merry put play. Now, uh, Mike, uh, some folks might argue with me that this isn't a proper spread trade, but we, we did show uh, a bear call spread that was riskless uh, last Tuesday. We mm -hmm. showed a ratio call spread that was riskless on Thursday, and since we've got so many spread traders, you guys know I'm, I'm not speaking hieroglyphics here. I, I uh, uh, showed some, some really cool stuff, or Mike and I did, show some really cool stuff. And uh, today we're going to show some, something different. It's the bear put spread, which normally includes risk, right? But remember, I said that in the context in which we show it, there is no risk. There is no risk to this. Okay. Number three, I'm going to show uh, one of several techniques that uh, we use to guarantee a higher return while leaving the upside potential of a stock completely open to grow more. And that's going to be very uh, apparent with your trade, Mike. Yes. This is another riskless spread trade you've likely never seen anywhere else. Towards the end of the program, I'm going to point out what the difference is, all right, in just this one trade. And I'll have given you this strategy, these strategies at no charge. And how cool is that? Well. Uh, the last three deals, we, we said that there was going to be a total no content, I mean 100% content guaranteed, no sales. Uh, at the end of today's uh, presentation, I am going to uh, make it an offer uh, because we've actually had a lot of folks writing in saying, okay, what do I do now? That's right. <laughs> all right, so we're going to solve the biggest problem once and for all. We're going to show a risk of spread trade that bulletproofs your stock, and we're going to get bulletproof without limiting your upside. So let's roll. I want to take a baseline reading and ask folks right now, right where you are, are you happy with your trading results? Okay, looking over the last 12 months, would you say, yes, I'm kicking butt and taking names, uh, or would you say, well, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm happy, but I could learn to do better. I'd sure like to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you might be in a mixed emotion state. Uh, not exactly. I'm not happy with my trading. I wouldn't say I'm really unhappy, but I'm not happy. And uh, okay, the last two categories uh, talk about losing money. So, um, Mike, so far, not yeah, good. we've, <laughs> yeah, uh, this is more profound than, uh, for example, Tuesday. On Tuesday, mm -hmm. we had, we had uh, nearly 20%, or we had 21% in the first two lines. Today, we've got only 8%. Uh, Okay, now it's, it's come up a little bit now that some more folks are 
participating. Good. I can't control it, but I would love to see it above 10. I'm, I would love to see it above 70 or 80, to tell you the truth. But we know how the market works, unfortunately, and how some of those strategies, I should say, work in the market. Okay. So, uh, we had more than half of our audience vote, uh, and uh, I'm going to encourage you again to... Um, you know, 100% participation, but uh, uh, nobody said, yes, I'm kicking butt and taking names. 11% said, yes, but I'm here to perhaps learn how to do better, so that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, we see about 20% in those first two lines, and the rest, uh, and the other 80% are uh, shared among the last three lines, uh, but today, it's a little more profound of a split. So 64% win some, lose some. Uh, we're going to change things for you. 18% are losing money. How can you stop? Uh, can you help me stop the hemorrhaging? And 7% say my results sucked. Okay, folks, I'm glad that you're here today, and uh, uh, I wish I had been in your shoes uh, about 12 years ago when I first started. Uh, well, I first started learning these principles after I lost everything. <laughs> okay, so I wish I, I had been in your shoes. What do you think your biggest problem is? If I could solve this one thing for you, mm. okay, and I want you to pick only one and three, and uh, let's make this really fast, folks. Thanks so much for participating so quickly, um, and, and, and I'm going to tell you that this, uh, this whole presentation is not going to be polls, okay? We're not just going to poll you, but some of these uh, polls are very revealing and helpful, not just to Mike and me, but they're going to be helpful to you, get you to ask yourself the tough questions. And know what kinds of answers you think you really need. Okay. So uh, wow, this is shaping up even more profoundly than I thought, Mike. This is pretty cool. Um, it's going to help us make our point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's leave that up for just another three or four seconds. Two, one, and close. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> I was going to try and close it right there because it was twenty twenty sixty. Uh, uh, Close enough. Uh, some more folks came in and vote, voted and changed it. Okay, so 19% say timing trades. I want to be a prophet. 19% say picking stocks. I want to be a wizard, right? But most of the audience is saying, man, managing risk or managing risk. Look, I misspelled it. Nah. <laughs> managing risk is the big deal. Okay, and uh, I'm going to have to agree. And in fact, guess what? Uh, if you're going to time trades or pick stocks, Mike, why are you doing that in the first place? Well, if I'm trying to time my trades, what I'm trying to do is get out of the position before the loss is too big or exit the position when the gain has matched my goals. If I'm picking stocks, if I'm focusing on picking stocks using fundamentals or technicals, I'm trying to pick the stocks that are moving in my direction that will move up in price and not go against me where I'll lose money. Right. Okay. So essentially, I mean, it's it's another way of managing risk. Um, well, uh, we're we're going to uh, talk about how to do that. I mean, how to practically do that because everyone's heard this little chestnut of cut your losers short and let your winners run. Mm -hmm. But if you but if you give practical instruction on how to do this, and I think that that's uh, you know what most folks are missing. Now, Mike, I'm going to talk about what. Cut your loser short, let your winners run is not. Uh, let's say we're going to hedge our stock. There's lots of different ways to hedge it, isn't there? Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, and, and for example, a covered call is a hedge. You, you get to, uh, uh, you're long on the stock, so that means you're mostly bullish, but you're a little bit bearish. You're, you're not sure what's going to happen in the near term, or, uh, or you hope that in the near term it goes up, but only a little. Mm -hmm. And so you head yourself by shorting a call, which is actually bearish. The, the shorting of the call is bearish. But the net uh, outlook for doing a cover call trade is net bullish, right? Well, yes. We want the stock to stay the same or move up in price uh, to maybe get assigned and earn the maximum return. We don't want the stock to drop because there's a lot of risk on the downside. Right. If you're long stock, uh, you don't want your stock to go down. That's kind of, you know important. <laughs> so what we're looking at here then is uh, a, a bullish trade where we're going to cut our winners short and let our losers run. Am I right or not? Well, that's what tends to happen in the covered call portfolio over time. It ends up being a sorting machine where the winners get called away from you for less of a gain than the stock actually moved, but the losers stay in your account and you have to manage them for several months to maybe a couple years out in time. Right.
Let's talk spread trades here for a minute because that's not hedging uh, the stock itself. It's uh, it's playing both sides. It's a leverage trade. If, yeah. If I'm directional, okay. If I if I think that the stock is going to go down and I sell the 45s and buy the 50. Mm -hmm. If the stock goes to forty-four dollars, I I make a profit, right? Well, that's right. Both of your calls will expire worthless. So you keep that initial net credit. All right, but if the stock and I'm bearish, if the stock goes to two dollars a share from the forty-five dollar range, mm -hmm. do I make more money? No, you're you're do capped I? at that really? maximum gain. <laughs> capped at that maximum gain of the net credit. You can't make more as the stock continues to fall. Exactly, and that's the deal. Uh, we do have the uh, privilege of dialing in a loss limit. Okay, so we we in that sense we cut our losers short, but we're not allowing our winners to run. So, Mike, uh, about a dozen years ago, I got this weird idea that maybe what I had to do instead of uh, uh, picking a direction is I ought to, you know, if if I'm somewhat bullish, all right. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I'm not sure, and I'm never sure. <laughs> I'm never a hundred percent certain that what I had to do is is uh, decide uh, to allow my winners to run if it goes in one direction, or uh, cut my losers short if it goes in the other direction. And guess what? Uh, so far, that's worked out really well for me, and I've uh, become what I call the champion of married puts. Now. Champion doesn't. It doesn't mean that I'm in some kind of competition. A champion is one that that fights for or speaks for another, right? Mm -hmm. And in that sense, I'm the champion of Mary puts because I've been telling people to do this, you know, for ten years now online. I've I've been blogging about it and telling folks about it and uh, showing my results and being very transparent. And um, you know, the 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 married put play is how I've done well in good markets. And how I've been able to not get hurt in bad markets. You know, in 2008, I, I, I nearly lost 4%. I came really close to losing 4% in a uh, $375,000 portfolio that I was mm. for a friend. Um, and uh, uh, that, they may, that may sound, you know, like, uh, oh gosh, I'm not trying to brag or be a jerk or anything. Because I know a lot of folks lost about 40% right. during that time. Okay, but uh, but the protective put has been what has kept me out of trouble, and I'm going to say, folks, <laughs> we need to do this. Okay, I'm going to take a second right here. I'm going to solve the biggest problem that most folks have in their trading. I'm going to show you the structure of what I call a radioactive profit machine. Okay, now what we're doing here is picking up stock, all right, and at the same time also picking up a put option that's six months away. Okay, uh, or more. The total invested is going to be, you know, greater obviously than the uh, than the stock itself. That's different than a buy right, isn't it? It's different than a covered call. All right, buy right. Yeah, we're going to buy stock and then we're going to maybe sell a one month out call against the position to generate a premium of fifty cents or a dollar, depending on the strike price that's selected, to lower our cost basis. But that caps our gains, of course. But we're still holding ninety seven to ninety eight percent of the risk of owning stock. Right. This this is a little backwards. Okay. Instead of uh, trying to take a discount on my stock by doing a buy right, I am adding not not risk, but I'm adding expense. Mm -hmm. okay? I'm adding expense, and it's not sexy. It doesn't seem like a, a cool thing to do. But then again, uh, it doesn't seem sexy to buy insurance for your car, but you need it. <laughs> right. You need it. You need uh, health insurance. You need you need uh, homeowners insurance. You need life insurance. Okay. Here's the deal. I've got a guaranteed exit. At twenty nine dollars a share for the next six months, mm -hmm. and for six months, the all I've got at risk is the difference. The difference between thirty eighty five, which is what I've invested, and twenty nine, which is what I'm guaranteed to get back. So a buck eighty five over a six month period. Actually, when you think of it that way, I'm spending thirty one cents a month, about a penny a day, to keep my position insured. Right. Okay. Now, the most I can possibly lose here is six percent of that position. And in fact, Mike, when when I do something like this, in fact, this particular uh, position, I bought five hundred shares and five puts. Okay. Six percent is still the amount uh, in that trade that I could lose, right? Yes. Of your invested capital, you can still only lose six percent in the worst case scenario. Okay. And when you multiply this number here times five hundred. 
okay, because they've got 500 shares. This is mm -hmm. a per risk, per share risk. All right. Uh, so a hundred. Uh, I'm sorry, 500 shares times a buck 85. 925 dollars is all that I had at risk, and I was trading in an account that was more than 100 thousand dollars. So that's one percent risk to my overall account, right? That's less than one percent. Yes, Kurt. Yeah, a little less than one percent. Okay. Now I'm saying that to uh, to to make some things really clear about the structure of this before we get fancy. Okay, we gotta we're we are gonna get fancy in a minute, but uh, we gotta get this uh, figured out here first, just the basics. Now, the biggest objection I get, Mike, when I showed this to you four years ago, uh, you weren't happy with it. Why? Why was that? I, I was well, a customer. Uh, right. Of Power Options. Go ahead and tell the story. Yeah, well, Kurt had called up as a customer of Power Options, and he wanted a walkthrough of using the historical suite of tools to identify these types of positions that he was trading. And my first response was, well, I can appreciate how you're limiting your risk, how you're keeping your risk to single digits, but I don't see how you're going to make a profit. You're going to need such a large movement in the stock. In this case, we might need the stock to be above $30.85 before you realize any profit. You might be better off doing a different position if you think that's where the stock's going to go over the next, you know, four, five, three months, for example. Right. Okay. Um, so so what what you said at that time was, I, I just don't see how you're going to make yeah. any money. I don't I see mean, how you're going to make stock, money. <laughs> yeah, that stock has to go way up for you to make anything. And and what most folks will do is they'll look at that and they'll say, you've spent thirty eighty five mm -hmm. on a stock. That's twenty seven thirty five. You can't make a dime until Altera moves to thirty ninety five. Oh really? <laughs> uh, after you came to my webinar, Mike, then you started to understand, and and uh, it was kind of a, a big deal actually. And we're taught, uh, yeah, we're taught yeah. to look at, at any strategy, covered calls or shorter term spreads. We're we're taught this inherent thing to focus on the break even, and I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. But the idea is with this concept, if you're going this far out in time, the put doesn't decline one to one. Yes, the break evens at 3085, but only if, Kurt, you held the position all the way to the put expiration date, you made no adjustments on the position, and the stock was still trading below uh, $30.85. Right. And the thing is, I'm in control of two out of those three factors. I'm not in control of what the stock will do, That's right. but I am in control of whether or not I'm going to make adjustments. <laughs> And I am uh, in control of whether or not I'm going to hold that stock all the way till the end. Mm -hmm. okay? So would you be surprised? No, you're not surprised uh, that by using the income methods, right, I right. locked in a profit before Altera ever reached the break even. Before it ever got to $30.85, the stock was only twenty nine forty, and I had made it so that I couldn't possibly take in less than a 75 cent profit. I couldn't lose anymore, mm -hmm. and, the ups and the upside was still open. <laughs> so what does that do to the $30.85 break-even theory? Well, it nullifies it, assuming that we know what adjustments we're going to make or what adjustments we can take advantage of, and with the knowledge, of course, that our put is not going to decay one-to-one -one with the stock, right. or lose value, I should say, one-to-one -one with the stock. Right, and that's the fancy stuff. Okay, we're going to get into the fancy stuff here, uh, and 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 in fact, I just want to uh, give the rundown. We're not going to do all the details today. That that's not the purpose of this webinar. We're going to do the details of your trade, Mike. Okay. Uh, but but I had gotten into 500 shares of Altera for thirty-five dollars and eighty-five cents a share. But by the time the stock was at twenty-nine forty, I was bulletproof, which means can't lose any money, and uh, went on after that to make twelve percent in a seven-week period. Uh, or 11.9 percent after commissions. Okay, mm -hmm. so bulletproof is when there's zero percent risk, uh, but six percent risk is where it started. Okay, so before going on to the income methods, before getting fancy, okay, let's begin with my claim of having solved the biggest problem that any trader faces. Okay, let's compare these three positions, Mike. If I own straight stock, or if I sell a covered call. Mm -hmm. Or if I run a married put trade, okay. Now, if your stock goes up twenty percent, which of the three? Uh, all three of those were bullish, weren't they? Yes, yes. All three have a bullish sentiment to them, Kurt. Right. So, which of the three does best when the stock goes up twenty percent? No, the straight stock. We've got uh, no type of hedge in there. We just bought the stock. It moves up twenty percent. We get a nice twenty percent gain on our investment. 
right? Now that covered call is going to cap the game, but it's still a winner, right? It oh yeah, still wins. We're still going to make you know four, five, six percent, whatever the percentage of assigned was at the time we opened the trade, right? And I just showed a married put play that I told you had a six percent risk mm -hmm. and a twelve percent payout, right? It started started with a six percent risk. All right, and it ended up uh, uh, being bulletproof in, in a few weeks, and then after those few weeks, then it ended up yielding 12%. Okay. Yes. All right, so here's the deal. What do you say we take our winnings from all three of those plays? We take the winning from the Mary Put, the winning from the, the uh, Cover Call, the winning, from, yeah, the winning from the Straight Up Stock, and we play it again, but this time, in our bullish play, the stock goes down 20%. Which of those three is going to do the worst? Well, the long stock position, no hedge in either place, so it's going to lose 20% of what we invested. Right. Uh, the covered call is going to lose less. How come? Well, we're going to keep some of that premium. We sold a call for the right to give up our shares of stock, so we keep that premium. So now the stock's dropped 20%. We only maybe realize a loss of 15% on the position. Okay. And then the married put, as I showed, I showed the structure, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it guarantees that I can get out at any time over a six-month period. I can get out for a maximum 6% loss, maybe less. Okay. So let's tally it up. If you played straight stock once and won, and then you played it again and lost, and you lost 20% both, uh, made 20% the first time and lost 20% the second time, you'd be even, right? Well, no, we saw that earlier with the Martingale curve. That's not how it works. This is going to end up being a net loss, and it works the reverse, too. If we lost 20% first and then made 20%, then we'd still be behind by the 4% as well. Exactly, exactly. All right, so, uh, so making 20%, then losing 20%, we're actually having a net loss, even though it sounds like we should be even. Okay, mm -hmm. now, does, does collecting premium both times on the covered call play help us? No, it actually hindered us in this case because we made less on the way up because we capped our gains, but we still took on a high amount of risk on the way down. Right, okay. So uh, we uh, make some money on the way up, and mm -hmm. we uh, lose less than the, than the uh, Straight stock star. We, yeah. lose, we lose less but we still end up with a net loss that's greater than if we had just played plain vanilla stock. Mm -hmm. Interesting. This is by winning one and losing one. Okay, now what about the married put play? Married put makes 12% on the winning play, mm -hmm. loses only 6% because that's the way it was structured on the losing play. All right, so out of the three, this is the only one that made money. That's right. Now, what I want to point out is that we were only right half the time in all three plays, the stock, the cover call, and the married put. Mm -hmm. But because of the structure of this one, we let our winners run and we cut our losers short. And therefore, uh, even in the same market, even with uh, uh, maybe the same timing and the same stock pick, okay, mm -hmm. We had different end results, and that's why I like to say, don't pick stocks, pick stops. You know, 19% of our audience still wants to pick stocks. I'm going to say, uh, you know what, forget it. <laughs> I mean, you know, don't don't totally forget it. You know, do do put some effort into picking stocks, but maybe only 10% of your trading effort should be there. The rest of it should be in mitigating risk. And keep in mind that the market is dynamic. It's ever-changing. And what criteria or what techniques may have worked for you successfully in the past six months probably aren't going to be the same criteria that's going to work for you six months going forward. Right. It's always in flux. Mm -hmm. Now, to the folks that say timing trades, timing trades, well, what was different about the timing between these three plays? Nothing. Well, it was the same timing, yeah. Three different strategies played in the same time frame. Right. Okay. So I like to say don't time trades, trade time. We're going to see how that's done here in a minute. But uh, let me just show the real life example of Altera. All right. I played Altera twice. Uh, Altera didn't go up by 20%. It went up by 17.3. And that's when I made the 12%. And also, the same stock, I played the same stock again with the same dollar amount mm -hmm. invested. Okay. And the second time, I lost 5.6% even though the stock went down by more than 20%. Okay, so uh, I win one, 
and then I lose one. Boy, when I pick a mic, I'm really pick a mic. <laughs> it went <laughs> down a lot. Okay, but the net between both of these was uh, nearly a thousand dollar gain. Okay, mm -hmm. I was right once and I was wrong, and not just wrong, but really wrong the second time. But because it capped my losses and kept it weighed down, uh, I wasn't in trouble. Okay, so the net gain for the married put play was nearly a thousand bucks. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, go back to the polls here, and then we're going to show our income method that everybody's been waiting for. Okay, let me just ask this: Does present loss management? technique guarantee that you can get out. And by the way, if you're using stop orders, that's not a guarantee. <laughs> a stop order <laughs> is a bend me over and give me the worst possible price order when a, uh, uh, a gap happens or even uh, something like what the, the, they called the flash crash on May 6, 2010. Right, right. Yeah, when the, when the flash crash happened, uh, there's major slippage due to those stop orders. Okay. All right, so Mike, uh, does your present loss management technique guarantee that you can get out any time with 6% or less damage? And, uh, oh man, for a second there, it was, uh, it was 11 and 89. Mm -hmm. Right now it's uh, 13 and 87. Let's get as much participation on this as possible because I want a real straight, across the board, honest answer from everybody. Three, two, one. Stop. Okay. All right. And let me share this. Mike, um, how many said no? Eighty-eight percent, Kurt. Eighty-eight percent. How many? How many said yes? Twelve. Twelve percent. Okay. I want to compare that with the results from an earlier poll. Mm -hmm. Looking back over the last twelve months, are you happy with trading results, Mike? How many said yes? That would be 11% of the audience was yes, and then the remainder, no. <laughs> well, the remainder had mixed emotions or flat out said no, that they weren't happy with their trading results. Mike, do you think it's a, uh, just a wild coincidence how similar those numbers are? No, I don't think it's that wild of a coincidence at all, Kurt. How about you? <laughs> I'm going to say that, that uh, it, it's almost, well, let me just, let me just say, uh, if you could go back in time and change all your losses last year to 6% or less or 1% of portfolio, kind of like what I showed, okay, uh, would you? Would you change it to 6% or less per trade and 1% or less uh, per uh, 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 as, as far as your portfolio is concerned? Okay, would you do that? If you, if you had a time machine, would you do that? Wow. Wow. Uh, I'm flabbergasted, you know, and the thing is, this is the solution. This is what's going to keep you out of trouble next year. In fact, uh, a year from today, uh, if somebody asks you the same question, would you like to say, you know what, <laughs> I did keep my losses down to 1% to, uh, or less, okay, 6% in each trade and 1% of my portfolio. Mm -hmm. so let me click that poll and share the results. 97% of our audience say, you know what, it, it would make a real dollar difference if I could do that. And 3%, just a small amount, did say, you know what, Frankenberg, I did manage my losses to 1%, but I still need help. Okay, good. That's why you're here. I'm glad that you came. Mike, are we back on my screen? I want to make sure everybody can see what I have to show next. Yeah, same stock, stock picking. Yep, that's what we're looking at right now. Same dates, uh, same entry and exit. This was in that comparison yes. we were looking at with the three strategies. Mm -hmm. Yes, what what the, what this is about uh, is the fact that um, in 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 that comparison between the stock, uh, the cover call trade, and the married put trade, all the factors were the same except for one factor, and that was the structure, the structure of the hedge. Yes, either there was no hedge, or the hedge was flawed, or the hedge was a good hedge. Okay. All right, and so that's uh, the deal. So we've already we've actually done this poll here, Mike. What has Radioactive trained up for you so far? If you could turn back the calendar, convert each of your loss less year to six percent or less, while keeping your winners, would you do it? Ninety-seven percent said yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, right here is where I'm supposed to pause and give the bulletproof. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, <laughs> blueprint information. I'm going to not do that right now because it's more important for me to get the content to everyone, 
but we, we are going to make an offer. I'm going to make our best offer this year uh, regarding the blueprints and the home study kits. Okay? But first, this is what you came for. You wanted to learn income method number four, right? That's what we promised, the ATM machine. I keep wanting to say ATM bell curve, but yes, the ATM machine. <laughs> ATM machine. All right. And Mike, you've got your slides queued up too, yes? After uh, the principal? I do now, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Because we wanted to see your, your uh, SLW traits. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show income method number four, uh, the, the practice and the principle of it, and then we're going to take a look at your uh, real-life study. Well, this is a real-life study too. They both are, yes. But, but yours is much more dramatic, okay? Uh, so anyway, here's what we call the five-line setup, okay? The stock, the put option, the total invested, and the guarantee, okay? And then, of course, the total at risk. So, uh, Mike, back in 2006, now why am I using a dated trade? Well, the one thing is, is that you like to show that, yes, you can do this on ETFs as well. You like the outcome, but you really like the numbers of this one because everything adds up nice and neat. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the easiest examples to show of this principle. Uh, but there's two other reasons why I put this up there. One is I had an online debate with another options trading guru mm. that that took issue with my Mary Put uh, uh, plays. He says, "Well, you know, there's no difference between that and and a long call." I said, "Well, you know, percent wise, there is a big difference between this and a long call. Percent wise." You know, uh, trying to keep you on the far left, trying to keep you at five percent or less uh, or six percent or less uh, losses. Mm -hmm. uh, the married put it kind of forces you to have the right position sizing. You know, and, and unless you're smarter than ninety-five percent of PhDs, like we showed at the beginning, <laughs> unless you're smarter than ninety-five percent of PhDs, guess what? Uh, you need to force uh, ideal position sizing. Okay, so anyway, that fellow that had that online debate with me, mm -hmm. I posted this trade on his site right after I made it, and it remains there to this day, and guess what? We're friends now, <laughs> and I've actually spoken for his group a number of times, so, right. so that's, yeah, that's the, uh, uh, one of, another reason why I like to use this for this trade, okay? All right, so, Mike, here's what happened. I bought the, uh, l let me call attention real quick yeah, let's to go back. Mm -hmm. price. The price of that put option, it was $5, okay? It's in the money because the, uh, the, the stock is trading at 115 and I'm buying a $119 put option. Mm -hmm. So it's in the money by 4 bucks. all right? I'm spending $5. And here's what happened. The stock went from $115 on uh, September 25th to $120. Now, is that a huge move? Is that, like, enormous? Yeah, it's less than five percent, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's just under five percent. I mean, five dollars when the stock was over one hundred fifteen. You know, mm -hmm. uh, a five dollar move is less than five percent. Okay, but here's what it did: it took my uh, one hundred nineteen dollar put option and it drove its value down. Big surprise, right? Right. You paid five dollars for it. It was now priced at two hundred five. Well, we said that when the stock moves up, the put has to decline. We know that. That's just uh, nature. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's gone down. All right. Uh, it's gone down from five dollars to two dollars and five cents. Whoop. Let's put that up there again. Now, before there was four dollars worth of intrinsic value, right? Your option was worth five dollars when you purchased it. It was a hundred and nineteen strike put while the stock was trading at one fifteen. So you had four dollars intrinsic. You were four dollars in the money. So the remaining time value was only a dollar. Right, and now it's only uh, time value. There's no intrinsic value left. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's it's gone down to two dollars and five cents. Now, Mike, let me ask you something. What if I came when you uh, stepped out of the office and I and I uh, uh, saw that you had two dollars and ninety-five cents on your desk and I took it, went and bought myself a tall latte at Starbucks? Would you be happy with that? Uh, I'd be a little concerned that you would just take the money off my table without asking me. So yeah, I'd be a little concerned. Okay. What if I gave you a five dollar Starbucks card, or or better yet, just five dollar bill? What if I gave you a five dollar bill? I let to... you do that trade every day. Yeah. <laughs> How about a hundred times? <laughs> mm -hmm. Because this is what happened, Mike. In order for my my uh, put to go down this much, my stock had to go up by five dollars, and I own both. Yes. 
Yeah, let's not forget. Okay. The biggest objection I get from folks that I show this method to is that the put is too expensive. And the second objection that I get is, uh, well, if the stock goes up, I'll lose on the put. Oh, really? Really? Well, here's something that's kind of interesting. Oh, that's that uh, that's out of line there. Let me try this again here. Let's not forget that as the intrinsic value that's in that put moves down, it can only be because the stock has moved up and you own the stock, right? That's right. We own both securities. So is there any net loss? No. Not, not from what I showed. No. It's a wash. DIA had to go up by $5 for my puts net value to go down by $2.95, and I'm cool with that, just like you're cool with trading $5 for two ninety five. If I mm -hmm. give you a five dollar bill and take two ninety five from you, you're cool with that, All right? That's right. Okay, so the price of the put option has gone down from five dollars to two dollars and five cents, but we haven't lost any of that intrinsic value. What about the time value? Has it gone down? No, the extrinsic value actually increased, and this is part of the ATM bell curve that I kept stumbling over. When an option goes from <laughs> in the money to at the money, you'll see the extrinsic value increase. Right, and we, we demonstrate this principle in the blueprint, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the fact is that $119 put option, when the stock is trading at 120 it's at the money, or it's, or it's you know, slightly, slightly out. out of the, yeah. yeah, slightly out of the money. Uh, but it's closer to at the money than it had been when I bought it. Mm -hmm. So the time value, even though uh, uh, three weeks has gone by, or 24 days has gone by, uh, the time value has actually risen. And, and that's not because of vol volatility. That's because it's closer to at the money than it had been. All right, that put had been way in the money. Now it's slightly out of the money, but it's closer to at the money, and that's why uh, we've actually made something. Now, so what, right? <laughs> what are we going to do about this? Well, here's the deal. DIA shares are at $120, mm -hmm. and so that means that the January $2008 $128 puts have come down in value to $970. They, they weren't there before, but now they are. They have been priced price five dollars higher or more. Right. But now, but now they're nine seventy. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my hundred nineteen dollar put. And by the way, it's a two thousand seven hundred nineteen dollar put option, and I'm going to use it because it's a hundred percent time value. And and this is why I like to say, don't time trades. Trade time. What I've done here is I've taken this time value that's swollen up, mm -hmm. and I'm using it to buy intrinsic value because this $128 put is still in the money, isn't it? Oh, yes. The stock's at 120. We're at least eight points in the money. Yes, we are. Yeah. Let me ask you something. How in the money is that $128 put when the stock is right at 120 Well, it's $8. We have $8 eight. of intrinsic value. So essentially the time value in this put is buck seventy, right? That's right. You know where I found the money to pay for that? Right but, here. <laughs> uh, that's right. By closing the 119 put, by selling the 119 put at 205, uh, you can pay for that 170. So this is done at a debit now, isn't it, Kurt? Yes, it's done at a debit. And this is why I call this income method the ATM machine, because uh, all the other income methods are done at a credit. That's why we call them income methods. But an ATM machine. Think about it, Mike. You can take money out of an ATM machine. Mm-hmm. But in order to do it legally, <laughs> uh, in order to do it without breaking it, right, uh, you've got to put money in first. Right. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So here's what we're doing. We're putting in $7.65. Now, this is kind of cool. I know that some folks are saying, well, Kurt, how is that good? You spent money. You didn't take money in. You spent money. How is that an income method? How does that improve your situation? Well, remember... Uh, on September 25th, DIA was trading at $115, and at the same time, the January 07, 119 calls were trading at 5. Mm -hmm. So my original cost, what I've got invested so far, is $120. But then, on October 19th, 
I do income method number four. I swap one put for another. And that introduces a debit of $7.65, which I showed on the previous slide, right? Yes, we paid that debt. So what's, yeah, so what's my net cost now of my radioactive profit machine? Well, you've put in a total of $127.65 into this trade okay. per share. And do we, do we remember that I swapped a January 07, 119 put for a January 08, $128 put? That's right. What does that $128 put give me the right to do? You now have the right, but not the obligation, but you have the right to sell your shares of stock at $128 any time between now and January 2008. Right, and this is in October 07, all right? So what I've done is I've, uh, I've got 15 months to play this thing. By the way, uh, I've got a zero risk, right? Because I've spent 127.65 for something that's guaranteed for 15 months to be worth $128, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So. I probably forgot to mention this, but DIA pays a dividend. That's right. And so uh, do I have any short calls? No, you've not used any kind of hedge of that time. No. Uh, and all the action that I'm showing happened in this little red dot, but the rest of this chart represents the term of uh, I can own that stock with zero risk. Right. Mm -hmm. And collect dividends and... Mike, you know of the income methods that we can play here, uh, particularly five and six. Right. We can play here and play with zero risk and, and uh, still take credits. Kind of cool. Now, it's not important what I did with this. What's important is to know what you could do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you see, the income methods are done to reduce that break-even model. To a lower risk. So that, yeah, to lower risk. And it's possible to even reduce your gap to a place where your uh, married put has a graph that looks like this. It's above the break-even. You can't possibly lose. Mm -hmm. now, now, does every stock that you play this way uh, get there? No. No. No, but it's possible, okay? And, and uh, uh, it's the next logical step after limiting your risk down to systemic percent less, okay? Now, when I talk about income methods, most folks' thoughts go to the obvious, which is cover calls trading. Mm -hmm. right? But selling a cover call limits your upside, and Mike, now I would really like for you to share uh, your income method number four, repeated play, mm -hmm. <laughs> that you did to continually bulletproof and raise the level of bulletproofing, right, with SLW. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, are you ready to take the screen from me? I am, yes, just one second here. Okay. Yeah, okay, sorry folks, and uh, as Kurt mentioned, of course, what we're going to... Sorry, what we're going to do is also show the, the first maneuver of that. And uh, the first maneuver, of course, is bulletproofing with income method number one. We're going to share that uh, with everyone as well, but then get into the full use of force. We're going to skip through this real quick, this first part. What we want to look at, Kurt, of course, is that here's that initial setup, the five-line setup, the way we set up at every trade. And the Silver Wheaton trade was open on uh, May 21st, 2010. And at the time... We bought, we're going to use 100 shares for this example. The trade was actually made with 300 shares and three puts. Uh, but we, could, we purchased uh, shares at 1720 and at the same time bought the December 20 put for 430. So we have 2150 invested. We have that guaranteed exit of $20. So the max risk is $1.50 per share or 7%. We opened this position with a bullish sentiment. So on May 21st, we started off with just a risk of 7%. That's the worst case scenario. And uh, you see here with the profit and loss chart here, the blue hockey stick graph down at the bottom, that represents the profit and loss at expiration. But the curved red line was more along the lines of the halfway point. So you see we don't need the stock to go all the way to 2150 prior to expiration to potentially realize a profit. Right. Okay. And there's our at risk again of 7%. Now, now Mike, uh, I don't mean to interrupt, but you, you're showing this with 100 shares and one put option, but in fact... You did this with 300 shares and three put options, right? That's right. I went the wrong way. There we go. Yes, this was actually done with 300 shares and three puts. So the total at risk was $450, and I had uh, about 64.50 invested. So that's still 7%. The 450 still was only 7% right. 
of what I had invested, and it represented about 1.3, 1.4% of my total portfolio value at the time. Got it. Okay, good. So that's the, the, double, force, the double, uh, double point of forcing an ideal size trade. Not only is my capital at risk in the position less than 10% or in that single digit range that we want, but I was also only risking uh, that 1%, 1.5% of my total portfolio value if the worst case scenario happened. Great. Okay. okay. Now, of course, the time frame was about here when we got into the position. And uh, this is what happened uh, going into July and then into August as well. So there was an income method we took advantage of. As we saw in that chart, the silver wheat moved up. And on June 28th, so we've been in the position for about a month, SLW opened at about 21.45. So remember, our initial at risk was $1.50. We put in an order to sell the August 21 call at $1.50. It didn't fill, but we did get it at $1.48. I wanted it to be even, but it didn't work. So we got filled at $1.48 with income method number one. So the new at risk, if we assume that maybe the call did expire, or the call expires, well, we started off with $1.50, we collected $1.48 of premium, so now we only have two cents at risk. It's pretty much a bulletproof position because remember, that put's not going to go to zero until we hit December expiration. Uh, now we had a question come in a little bit earlier, um, just a moment ago about timing and doesn't, you know, selling the call, Kurt, you had mentioned, cap your gains. Well, yes. Here's what the profit and loss chart of the silver wheat and trade looked at with the stock, the put, and our short call in place. You see we have that limited risk now. The maximum risk on the downside is down to about only $2, roughly two cents. And of course the maximum profit here, if the stock was trading right at this price, that would be about 11.6%. Now this matched my goals. Okay, I went into the blueprint and I said, what is, what is my SEGA model for this position? Meaning, what are the conditions? What are my expectations? What are my goals? And that determines my actions. So in this position, I was kind of happy with this, but I had ways to adjust it if it kept exceeding my expectations, went up to 22, 23. There were other things I could do on this position to manage it. But on August 20th, when the stock pulled back, the stock ended up trading, it was fluctuating right around that $21 per share. We ended up getting filled uh, to buy to close our call for three cents. And remember, we had an initial risk now of two cents. Start off with 150, collected the 148, and then uh, that lowered the risk to two cents. But we bought to close the call. The stock was fluctuating right around that price. Didn't want to take the chance. We bought to close it for three cents. So now we still kept the premium of a dollar 45. So the total at risk on the stock plus put combination that we're still holding is now down to. Five cents, or roughly five dollars for 100 shares. Still that 0 0.2 percent, but now with the call closed on August expiration, we have nothing to cap our upside gains. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're in a good position. We're pretty much full. That's kind of cool. That's mm -hmm. right. You, you, the the most you could possibly lose out of your 6,450 dollars invested, yes, is 15 dollars. Well, 15 bucks total, okay. right? Yeah, and and so that's uh, two tenths of one percent. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that you're bulletproof because there's still quite a bit of time left until uh, expiration at this point, right? Right, that's exactly right. And what's also not shown here, what's also another misconception we see a few times, Kurt, is that someone might look at this and say, "Well, I don't understand how that helped you because the stock is trading at this point. It was trading around twenty-one dollars. Uh, I took the screenshot after that. I apologize for that, but the stock was trading around twenty-one dollars. Everyone would say, "Well." you had a four point movement on the stock from where you purchased it, but you're only profiting, you know, five points. No, that's not true. The, the five dollars <laughs> is the most I could lose if the stock pulls back. If we lose everything now, if the stock goes down to one dollar per share, that is the most that we could lose. Right. Okay, but right now if I chose to liquidate the position, that put still has value. I close the stock around twenty one. We still have a good profit on the position. It's not that this is just you know, I'm still risking 0.2% if I liquidate. My liquidation profit is pretty high, but we'll see that in just a moment, too. So that's just bulletproofing with income method number one. Very briefly. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's, let's skip this. Let's, uh, right. let's talk about uh, what happens with income method number four now. All right. So after August expiration, stock was trading uh -huh. around 21. SLW continued to move up in price going into uh, later dates of August and into September. So we consulted, uh -huh. I consulted the blueprint and decided, well, do I want to do income method number one again or use a different income method? Okay, Here's where we stood 
after receiving the premium. The cost basis of our stock has dropped down to 1575. All right, that was the 1720 initial price minus the dollar 45 we kept from the call premium. We still have a December 20 put that we paid 430, so our total invested is twenty dollars and five cents. We have a guaranteed exit of twenty, so we're risking a 0.2 percent. And now we want to use that income method number four. I chose to use income method number four to lock in profit. So remember, our total cost now is at 2005. Kurt, we're going to sell to close that December 20 put for a dollar ten. Okay. So that's going to take the total cost basis of what we have in the position down to 18. 95. Right. Now I'm going to buy to open a December 24 put for 270. Now just on that transaction, selling to close the 20 put for $1.10, buying to open the 24 for 270, this is a debit of $1.60. I'm putting more money into the position. Right. You've spent you spent $1.60 to swap those puts. Mm -hmm. But I'm gaining four dollars in guaranteed exit so it's essentially a gain of two dollars and forty cents that's it yeah it's a guaranteed gain it's a guaranteed gain so now my cost basis goes up to twenty one sixty five but we're guaranteed an exit of twenty four so the new at risk hurt is a negative two dollars and thirty five cents and what does a negative at risk mean well negative at risk uh... is bulletproof okay mm -hmm. but uh... Beside uh, the thing I want to draw everybody's attention to is that your profit at this point is not two dollars and thirty-five cents. No. Your 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 profit is higher than that because that put is worth something still. Mm -hmm. uh, but if everything goes awry from here, if everything goes down, then you'll hang on at that spot. You'll you'll hang on at the two thirty-five uh, profit or the ten point nine percent profit. Um, that's the worst case scenario. Yes, this but is the worst case keeps, scenario. Yeah, but if your stock keeps moving up, there's no short calls to limit its growth. And I could even liquidate it right now and still keep, you know, two dollars and sixty, two dollars and sixty-five cents on this put, and be selling to close the stock at around twenty-one dollars. So that's still a profit from where we originally got in of about four dollars, three and a half, four dollars on the position. Good, good thing you didn't, though, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Good thing you didn't liquidate. So, so uh, tell us what happens next. The next income method for play. Yeah. Well, this is just the the setup that you can see. This is the graphic interpretation. We're at this point here. We're at this profit. We're not here at this bottom line. That's right, the worst case right. scenario, as Kurt mentioned. We're up in this area as the stock continues to move up. So we're guaranteed to make at least ten point nine percent in the worst case scenario. Okay. Right. Now going forward, we did generate seventy cents using income method number one, but on September eighth. The stock continued to move up, and we did another adjustment here. We sold the 24 put that we had purchased for 220. So the stock moved up. Right. We paid 270 for the put. The stock moved up a point and a half. We only lost 50 cents on the put. So we're selling to close the 24 put for 220, and buying to open the 27 put for about four dollars. So for you're, $4. Uh, yeah, you're spending. A uh, dollar and eighty cents. Another dollar and, eighty. But guaranteeing yourself three dollars. That's exactly right. We're going to roll that up again. Good now, trade. what? Are, yeah. What does that do to our position? Well, now with the new cost basis, remember we paid two seventy for the put. We're selling it for two twenty, and buying the twenty seven put for four dollars. So what did we do? We moved that guaranteed exit of two hundred and thirty five dollars of profit, or ten point nine percent. So now our worst case scenario is we're going to make 18.7% or $425 on the investment. Yeah, actually, eight, uh, 425 on uh, 100 shares, but you had 300 shares, so it's right. 1275. It was 1275 and was still 18.7%. And that's the worst case scenario. Right. We're in September, so we still have this December protection in place, and I haven't sold anything to cap my upside. Now I'm a little better off, aren't I, Kurt, than uh, cut your losers short and let your winners run. I'm sort of in a tails you make 18.7% heads you do better. Right. That's, uh, that's a wonderful place to be, especially when, uh, you know, SLW at this point was having kind of a, a rocky climb. I mean, it was going up, but it was all over the board. It had some downturns as well, yes. It kept exceeding my yeah. expectations, absolutely.
Yeah. So uh, you know, when earnings announcement come up, you, you weren't biting your fingernails down to the second knuckle, right? You no, I thinking, crossed. Geez, what? Yeah, yeah I ahead. crossed uh, two earnings during this during this trade. Yes. Wow. And, and during that time, I, I bet you you, you weren't uh, you know nervous about a a gap down or or anything like that. No. So, uh, Michael, uh, let's uh, fast forward here. What what happened again? Did did you do income method four again? Yes, and this is the one, uh, the last one here, I think, before we liquidated. And this time, the stock had moved up against Silver Wheaton's now at 32. Uh -huh. I, I let it go. It kept exceeding my expectations, and I let it go. But I decided to lock in more of this gain. So now, the put, we're at uh, November 4th. The stock's at 32. That December 27th put is five points out of the money, but it still has some time value left, 52 cents on the position. But the March 32 put now was priced at 380. So I'm going to play. Okay. I'm going to put in another debit of 328 into the position to get five dollars more. So I'm gaining okay. another dollar and 52 cents or so of guaranteed 72. profit on the position. So, thank you, Kurt. Dollar yeah. <laughs> 72 <laughs> guaranteed yeah. profit on the position. So now you know we have our cost based on our stock after the income methods. Uh, we originally bought the December 27 put for four dollars, selling it for 52, buying it 380, and down here at the bottom, you can see that now we're guaranteed for every 100 shares, we're guaranteed five dollars and 95 cents in profit, or 22.9 percent, and that's in the worst case scenario. Wow! We kept ratcheting up the put from uh, roughly 21 to then I think we went up to 24. Then we went up to 27, and then we went up to 32. So we just, as the stock moved, we kept ratcheting this up. Yes, I'm paying a debit into the position, but at the same time, I'm guaranteeing myself a higher payout. Now, a couple times uh, we, we get this comment is that, well, wouldn't you have done better if you had just left the position alone, if you had bought the stock, bought the put, and not added more money using income method number four? Yes, but at the same time. If the stock pulled back at any given time, I wouldn't have locked in the higher profit. Income method number four is a more conservative approach in the sense that, yes, I'm putting more money into the position because I'm trying to lock in a guaranteed profit on the way up. If I knew what the stock was going to do, Kurt, you know, when we get to the end here, when we get to the liquidation uh, sum up here, if I knew what the stock was going to do, maybe I wouldn't have done income method number four. Maybe I would have done something completely different, but I didn't know the future. And a volatile stock, Kurt, as you mentioned, such as SLW, which is going up in uh, you know, quick movements and then coming down in quick movements and going up in quick movements and coming down in quick movements during this time frame, I wanted to lock in that profit so in case there was a big gap and it came back down to where I bought it, I was guaranteed 22.9%, no matter what happened sure. next. That's cool. Now, Mike, uh, I'm going to grab the screen from you, okay? Okay. And, and uh, I'd like you to tell me what finally liquidated at. Well, it's on December seventh. Uh, we didn't do another. Shown, by the way? Yeah, I have your reducing gap to less than zero, Kurt. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So, well, the end story was is that on about December seventh, the stock had moved up to about forty-two dollars, forty-one fifty per share, and this was sort of my trigger. We still had the March thirty-two put. Um, and we were able to close out the position. We eventually sold the stock at forty dollars and thirty cents. Uh, we sold to close the March 32 put for a dollar 30. It still had a dollar 30 of value in it. The March put, even though we were in December, the stock was at 43. It still had a dollar 30. So we took in 41.60, and our total cost in the position was 26.03. So we made 15 dollars and 57 cents profit per share off a 26 dollar and three cent investment, which worked out to be a 59.8 percent gain. Yeah. Now, Mike, that's uh, that's conservative. I'm going to point out that that's conservative gain because uh, sixty. Uh, you know, uh, what was it? Twenty one fifty was your real oh, original investment. The real original investment was twenty one fifty. That's right. Yeah. And uh, every time that you put money in, you were guaranteeing yourself money back. But you're in numbers. Mm -hmm. You're taking into consideration everything that you put in. That's right. Everything that you put in, not the twenty-one fifty, but the twenty-six and change. Right? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's that's what you're saying, uh, and and then basing your your uh, fifty-nine point eight percent gain off of that higher number. Uh, so so actually, you're you're not, you know, you're being very conservative. It, it's in some ways an argument might be made that you 
made a bigger return than that. That's um, right. You could but, say that, uh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but we want to be as as uh, transparent as possible. So twenty one fifty is what you put in at the beginning. You made yourself bulletproof, and then every dollar that you put in afterwards, you were guaranteed to get something back. So mm -hmm. and twenty six. Uh, so out of twenty six invested, you made how much? Fifteen dollars and fifty seven cents. Okay, per share. Per share, yes. All right. From a twenty-six dollar per share investment, so mm -hmm. pretty cool, uh, oh, yeah. Mike. Uh, I'm 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 pretty impressed with that. When 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 I talk about the income methods, most folks' thoughts go to the obvious, which is covered calls. But selling a covered call and, uh, and getting yourself called out in in this case would have been a bad thing, right? I would have or, or a not as not as good thing. Right. Yeah, I would have had to put more money in to try to roll the call or get assigned early um, or risk getting assigned than maybe trying to buy back into the stock at a higher price so I didn't get the full move. Right. Right. So selling cover calls limits your upside. Uh, but thankfully, you know, I've discovered a slew of ways to reduce the cost base of a married put without selling cover calls. Now, mm -hmm. I want to point something out, Mike. Your SLW trade returned 59.8%, though the stock almost doubled, right? And That's I know right. a lot of folks. Uh, a lot of folks will say, "Well, geez, you would have done so much better with the <laughs> stock, right? Right? I mean, that's, that's right. That's, that's, folks that's the usual okay. argument." Mm -hmm. During the same time frame, in fact, over the last three years, what has been your biggest loss? I have uh, to know the answers. Uh, yes, it was four point five percent. It was actually on uh, TLM, Talisman Energy, not TLS, but that's okay. It was Talisman Energy, TLM. The loss on that married put position was four point five percent. It was originally open with about a six point two six percent at risk. Um, following the rules in the blueprint, I decided it was just time to get out of the position, so I took a four point five percent loss on that. That was your biggest loss, and that was my biggest loss uh, in the radioactive uh, in my radioactive trades, I should say. <laughs> Yeah. Now, uh, and the stock itself went down to less than half, right? Oh, yeah. It went down from $20 to about 11 I think, uh, let me just check real quick. Real quick, I think it's below $10 today, or it's right at $10. Uh, $10.14 today, it looks like. And I bought into oh, it at about $20.30 or something when I opened the married put. So so that is less than half. Mm -hmm. Well, well uh, here's the deal. When you have a 50% loss... Mm -hmm. And then a hundred percent gain. You don't have anything to brag about. No. <laughs> That's what would have happened, Mike, if you'd have uh, played just the straight stock on SLW and played just the straight stock on uh, TLN, not TLS. Right. TLM, uh, Amazon Marriott. Having, having yeah, having a four point five percent loss, and that's the biggest loss that you took in, mm -hmm. in the last three years. Okay, and then a fifty nine point eight percent gain. Hey, that's better than a lot of folks did last year. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, folks, we're going to wind it up. I'm going to talk about what we've done, and uh, we want to take some of your questions, okay? Uh, but uh, I'm going to give the offer, and then we'll start taking questions. So start queuing up your questions, sending them in to Mike. Uh, on May 22nd, okay, about nine days ago, I showed how to take a bear call debit spread and make it riskless. That's one of the income methods. We call it income method number six. And when it's done correctly and in the correct context, we take a bear call spread and make it, uh, uh, add it to a married put play and make it riskless. Okay, you'll notice that there's no break even. Okay, kind of mm -hmm. cool. Uh, some benefits of uh, trading radioactively. It's an overlay onto whatever trading you already do. You don't have to learn a whole new set of, of uh, uh, stock picking type information. Okay, what you've got to do is uh, learn how to structure trades so that you don't get hurt, and that's what most of you said that you would do re retroactively, right? I mean, didn't ninety-seven percent? Ninety-seven percent, I think it was. Yes. Yeah, ninety-seven percent of the audience said, "Man." Uh, a real dollar difference if I can do what you just showed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and would I go back in uh, in time a year and do it? Yeah, I would. Okay, all right. Um, your losses are controlled from the beginning. Okay, and then after your losses are controlled, there's the possibility. It doesn't always happen, but there's the possibility of bulletproofing. 
and it's scalable. Mike traded uh, 300 shares. Somebody that's a smaller fish would trade 100. Somebody that's a bigger fish would trade 20,000. Mm -hmm. But regardless, they'd still have single-digit percents at risk to start with, and then they'd be bulletproof afterwards if they followed your same trading tip. Okay? All right. So uh, what is that worth? <laughs> what, yeah, what? What is that worth? <laughs> uh, what do you think it ought to be worth? I mean, what do you mean 10 income methods? We showed one today, or two, I guess, because you also showed income method one, right, Mike? I did. I did, yes. One and four, okay. Uh, and, and we showed six on the 22nd. Uh, on the 24th, we showed five. Five, and three uh, was on the 29th, Bulletproof Fest. Yeah, two, Tuesday we did uh, the Bulletproof Vest, mm -hmm. Income Method 3, getting paid to Bulletproof Your Stock. Uh, and today we showed Income Method 4. So we've shown four. So what do you think having 10 Income Methods? Developed over 10 years with the help of thousands of customers, you know, folks in 30 countries have bought, have bought the blueprint, and we've taken their feedback and uh, their experiences, and we've used it to enhance the, the blueprint. I'm even coming up now, Mike, with income method number 11. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's going to be available in, in, uh, uh, to, to folks to get the blueprint today. Uh, that's going to be available in, in a, uh, an update. PDF update. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and, and close this and share the results. It's been up there for almost a minute. A full minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Six percent say that would be worth anything to me. I have the answers. Okay, you're dismissed. Uh, <laughs> for the other ninety-four percent that are on the line, sixty-seven percent say at least a thousand bucks in one year alone. Mm. Seventeen percent, dude. I spent three thousand dollars for a less complete solution already. Uh, that's probably our covered calls or credit spread weekend uh, warriors, right? Yeah, there's a lot of services out there. I've even seen ones that are fifteen thousand dollars for a two-day training course or two and a half-day training course to learn uh, credit spreads and calendar spreads. Oh my God! D does it come with a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee? No, of course not. <laughs> Oh, okay. Just checking. Well, as far uh, as I know, it doesn't. <laughs> and reference materials, you know, with uh, mm -hmm. uh, piles and piles of, of reference and support. Well, I don't know. 11% say I, I spent $5,000 or more. Uh, another 11% say just the loss management idea. Could have been worth $10,000 to you last year. Okay. Mm. Well, having, having said that, uh, I'd like to make our offer, okay? Uh, any offer includes what you get and what it will cost. And what you risk, okay? Um, to pick up the blueprint, um, it's uh, well, there's no risk because we talked about bulletproofing, and uh, bulletproofing is essentially, Mike, when you get into a situation with your stock that you can no longer lose, but you mm -hmm. can still gain. That's right. Well, uh, I'm I'm going to say that that I'm making you a bulletproof offer. If if you want to pick up the blueprint or the home study kit, which is a better buy, okay. If you, if you want to pick that uh, one or one or the other of those up, uh, we're going to guarantee it for for 30 days. In fact, if you return it on day 35, we're not going to dicker with you about it. Okay, we'll go ahead and return the money. Uh, we've got a very low single-digit return rate, single-digit percent return rate. Okay, so that's that's pretty darn bulletproof. And we've got uh, folks that have uh, have mentioned that they're they're pleased with the materials, okay. But um, uh, what I'd like to do is is let you know what uh, is available. Uh, Mike, right mm -hmm. now we are we are charging three thirty nine for the blueprint, right? Right at radioactivetrading.com, underneath the products tab, you'll see the blueprint at three hundred and thirty nine dollars. Okay. And the uh, home study kit is five nine nine. Yes, and that includes the blueprints and all six of your hour and a half long mastery series CDs, which uh, show um, sort of more webinar examples of the ten different income methods and combining income methods as well. Okay, uh, we got a, an email this morning, or I did, Mike. I was I was up early uh, with the chickens and and. Uh, uh, about 6.15 is when I was checking email, 6.15 mm -hmm. a.m., and I saw an email from a fellow in Hong Kong. Now, now this, this guy is uh, uh, not 
able usually to make the webinars while he's awake. <laughs> and so he said, oh, geez, you know, I, I thought that there was like a special offer or something like that. And, and I, I wrote back to him. Uh, I wasn't sure if you had got back to him because we got a shared address here, Mike. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if you got back to him yet. So I, I, I wrote this to him. I said, I'm not sure if Mike got back to you yet, but I can help you with the question. He was hoping to get in on some kind of a discount. I said, there's already a discount offer in the kit itself. When you get the uh, uh, the uh, home study kit, it's right. $5.99 instead of like $9.28. Okay? So all the materials put together would actually cost 35% more if purchased separately. Okay? But I know that he was looking for a deal. Okay? Uh, I, oh, I told him that we've sold thousands of blueprints and CDs separately, but since we started offering them all in one kit last November, it's doing very, very well. Thanks for your interest, but I know you're looking for a deal. <laughs> so beside the discount, there's also a special value-added offer that we're going to be talking about on today's webinar. Mm -hmm. And I told him that if he it took action you know, tonight before midnight, he, he'd go ahead and get this. This is our end-of-the-month uh, deal. Okay? I told him that he would get it even if uh, he couldn't join us for today's webinar. So I'll go ahead and tell it. Uh, when you pick up the radioactive... Home Study Kit for $5.99, you also receive a free month subscription to Power Options. Now, if you're already a Power Options subscriber, guess what? You get a credit. Is that yeah. all right? Yeah, we just push yeah, that out it. a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's either $59 or $79, depending on uh, what level of Power Options you're using, okay? But, uh, but, but you're going to get the 79 level, all right? You're going to mm -hmm. be getting the real-time quotes and everything. Okay. Also, the Quick Start Guide, which is uh, like a 16-page paper. Uh, it's kind of a digestive material. It, it'll get you ready quickly mm -hmm. to begin your first radioactive trades. And, of course, the blueprint and the CDs are there for your reference. Okay. Number three, a $59 off coupon for your first month of Fusion subscription if you want it. Now, you're not required to do Fusion, but if, but if you want a Fusion subscription, a lot of folks do. Mm -hmm. uh, you get $59 off your first month, which is good because it's only $69. <laughs> so, so it costs you 10 bucks for your first month of test drive. Okay? Plus, here's a big deal. Okay? A half-hour consultation with me, Kurt Frankenberg, about crafting your personal trading plan, or you get a half-hour consult with Mike on customizing power options for the, ra for the radioactive trading style of, uh, of risk management. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now this is a hundred ninety-five dollar value, and we're giving away ten of these. Okay, so, and I guess we got to make sure we give one to the fellow in Hong Kong. All okay? right. So, so here's what to do right now: go to radioactivetrading.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, or call uh, plus one if you're out of the country, three zero two nine nine two seven nine seven one, or within the United States eight seven seven. Nine nine two seven nine seven one. Mm -hmm. Be patient. If if there's, uh, you know, if you get a recording, uh, leave your information. They will call you back. All right. Uh, or or just go to the site. You can pick it pick it up and be guaranteed all those offers. It's not on the site. It won't say any of the stuff that I just said on the site. All those bonus uh, bonuses. Mm -hmm. So so just so you know, because you're on this webinar, uh, uh, you can. Uh, you can get this handled. Okay. And then uh, let's see, Mike, the last thing I wanted to do was I wanted to get on um, uh, the uh, website and show where to go. All right. Okay. We, had, we have 77 folks uh, with us today. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Let me go on over to uh, radioactivetrain.com. And the products page is where to be. We should wind this up in one minute, huh? <laughs> yeah, half, half past the hour. <laughs> I'll, I'll wind this up in one minute, folks. Okay, the blueprint is 339. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's going to include all those bonuses that we talked about today. Uh, the Radioactive Trading Home Study Kit includes the blueprint and also six uh, CDs, and it's 35% uh, uh, off what you would normally pay for all this stuff separately. Right. Okay has the same guarantees, the same bonus. By the way, uh, one of these CDs, the Foundations of Radioactive Trading, we're going to just jump up here and give that to you for free if you're just picking up the blueprint.
we're going to make sure that you get that also. Okay, so that right. that brings the uh, that brings the value of the bonuses higher than what you're paying for the blueprint. Kind of cool. And uh, uh, again, both the blueprint and the radioactive trading home study kit are uh, guaranteed. Uh, That's so right. It's a bulletproof trade. Okay, uh, Mike. Uh, let I guess we should finish. Although uh, maybe there's a couple of questions. Let me just well, uh, tell. Yeah, let me just tell everybody that's our dog and pony show. If you want to sign out now, go ahead, and then <laughs> and then we'll take a couple questions from the folks uh, that are still waiting to have their question answered. All right, let's start here. Ross wanted to know if I invest in your program, will you help me along the way? I need a coach or a mentor, perhaps. Uh, we don't. Uh, we do uh, teach you how to craft your own trading plan. Okay. That's that's uh, one of the bonuses that we talked about. What I won't do is if you call me and say, "Should I sell Starbucks?" I won't say, "Yeah, do that. Sell Starbucks." You know, I won't say, "Oh man, you know what? Uh, buy another put." You know, I I won't tell you what to do. But yes, there is a uh, hundred percent support on any concept or idea that's in the blueprint or the home study kit. Uh, and uh, we will make it clear to you. If it's not clear to you, we will make it clear to you. That's what support at radioactivetrading.com is for. As far as uh, telling you what to do with your trading, we won't do that. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's not legal for us to do that. That's right. <laughs> so, so that's why we can't. Okay, uh, other questions? Okay, um, we had two uh, two come in uh, that were basically on the same lines. It says, well, uh, I see what you're doing, and it's bullish, but how would you approach this in a bearish market? There's three different ways to reverse an RPM. RPM is the, the name that I give to the uh, particular uh, configuration of a married put mm -hmm. that, uh, that keeps the risk down to 5 or 6% for about a six-month period or better. All right? Uh, there's three different ways to reverse it. One way is the way that's probably coming to your mind right now, and that would be to short stock and buy a call. That's not what I recommend. The other two ways are discussed in the blueprints. I won't go into great de detail, but I'll, I'll just hint at uh, one of them. Uh, you know, you, you could go long on an inverse ETF. Mm -hmm. I have one of those right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah, you're doing that now. Um, Okay. Other and questions? The, the great thing about that is that you don't have to reverse your thinking. If you try to do the shorting the stock and then buying a call, then you have to reverse all the different income methods. But if you you know just following the inverse uh, ETF, well, I'm still going bullish. I'm still using the income methods as they're written, so I don't have to reverse my train of thought. Um, right. Another, uh, let me point something else out. The uh, uh, in a an IRA, you cannot short a stock. Mm -hmm. But but the other two alternatives that I give in the blueprint, you can do in an IRA. You can do a bearish expectation radioactive profit machine, okay, in an IRA. If you do it one of the two other ways, uh, and uh, and you can't short stock mm -hmm. right, in an IRA. So okay, next question. All right. Well, we had this one a little bit yesterday. I, I don't know the exact answer um, to this. Gentleman said, uh, I have a Canadian RRSP. Can you use all of your strategies in my RRSP? Ross, you would have to check because a gentleman yesterday said that some, or I'm sorry, on Tuesday said that some of those income methods he's not going to be able to do in the, his technique. And, of course, you can't short a Canadian RSP either, but, hey, that's why you can invest in those uh, inverse ETFs. But you'll have to check with those because in our IRA accounts, um, I can, I'm in a restricted IRA account here, and I can do all of the different income methods and uh, do all the trades except for one right now, really, income method number eight, um, and the, maybe the full version of income method number five. But I don't personally know the restriction of the uh, RRSPs up in Canada. We had a gentleman on Tuesday say that he couldn't do that. And, right. Uh, um, th and that's, that's actually a question that has to do with your sovereign nation's uh, rules and regs. Mm -hmm. as, as far as uh, can you, could you own an account in America? Yeah, uh, <laughs> we have a pile of uh, Australians uh, and and, and uh, uh, folks in Hong Kong that invest in the American market, and uh, and they go ahead and do all these strategies. But as far as the type of account that you're in, uh, the and the tax structure and so forth, you need to talk to a Canadian uh, tax attorney or a Canadian accountant, mm -hmm. um, or someone that's familiar with the Canadian rules. That's right. Okay. All right, cool. Next. All right. 
Uh, the last one here, and I, 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 I feel for this, Ron, but uh, right now we showed the offer for the blueprint with those specials, but Ron says, for the folks that have lost most of their money or all of their money doing furious strategies, do you have any end-of-the-month specials on just the blueprint? Well, we're running that special that right now. Yeah, that was it, what we showed with the, we don't have a discount on the price there, Ron, I apologize for that. We are offering, you know, just more bonus, and we are offering a fair amount of bonuses, a very fair amount of bonuses right there. Uh, with that blueprint if you pick that up. And of course remember it is uh, risk free and I know it, it's it's a shame to have lost a lot of money, see so much money go down the drain with some of those uh, inferior positions. And Jeff, thank you. So uh, <laughs> Jeff just said I just ordered, extra is much appreciated and I do receive confirm did see confirmation of your order Jeff, so thank you. We'll probably get that sent out of the office here in probably the next 10-15 minutes and you should have it within two to three days. Very cool. Um, uh, you, you mentioned that you were sorry uh, to someone about a about a lack of a discount, and um, I'm, oh, I'm going to. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna, sorry. I wasn't really I'm saying gonna, sorry for lack of a discount. I was saying I'm sorry that he's in that situation because I've seen so many uh, customers over, or so many investors over the last nine years who were promised three to six percent per month, and they're promised that hey, you come to where we can send them on, you'll make money. Eight months later, they're calling me and said, I've taken a $10,000 account down to $850 following this covered call guru. What do I do now? I, I've right. seen it, and I hate it. Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry for that. Absolutely, I'm sorry for that, because I've seen Just it. I've take, seen it happen. Take heart in knowing that, uh, you know, of, of adversity is born uh, great things. You know, take heart in knowing that the blueprints and, and the people that it's helped came out of a situation like yours only worse. I, I lost everything. Mm -hmm. uh, well, all but four hundred dollars. Okay, all but four hundred dollars of my entire life savings went down the drain uh, doing exactly what you did. I was listening to a cover call guru, and I uh, got into a position that he recommended, and I uh, I did it on margin, like he said, mm -hmm. <laughs> and lost it all. But uh, you know, again, great great things are born of adversity. And uh, hopefully you're not in as bad a situation as I was 12 years ago, but um, but uh, it's it's nothing but up from here. And if you'd like to uh, if you'd like to shorten the learning curve by about 10 years, pick up the blueprint. I think you'll dig it. Well, cool, uh, Mike. Was that was that pretty much it for our questions? Yeah, I think that's it. And uh, uh, you know, if we did not get to your question, but I think we did. If we didn't get to a question, or you think of one later on, just send us an email to support at radioactivetrading.com. I just sent everyone that chat message there. So if you think of something later, just send us an email to support at radioactivetrading.com. Very good. Okay. Well, cool, Mike. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close her up. I'm going to point folks again to RadioactiveTrading.com, where you can uh, listen to the first chapter of the Blueprint for free. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it, most of it, you can't listen to because there's so many charts and graphs, and we don't want you to wreck your car. Okay, <laughs> but you can certainly listen to the first chapter for free there. You can also look at the table of contents, and of course, you can uh, view the uh, uh, what's in the uh, CDs too in the Radioactive Trading Home Study Kit. Uh, Mike, thanks so much for your uh, assistance these last four weeks. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and for those yeah. of you, we did have that question coming earlier. Paul, unfortunately, had to leave the end of the uh -huh. webinar on the 29th, so we didn't see it, and it hasn't been posted. By Friday morning, um, those four webinars that Kurt was referring to, the one from the 22nd is up there. But by Friday morning, I'll make sure the one from the 24th, the one from the 29th, and today's are up there in the Radioactive Trading Archive. Guys, uh, go check that out while it's still free. We're going to make those into yep. a paid product at some time in the future. Okay, yep. but right now they're up there for free. Yep, going to leave them up for maybe a week or so, maybe five days. Right, and there's there's no pitch on it <laughs> except you know we're giving a pitch right now, but there's no pitch on any, any of those. It's